All right, so the countdown is up. Hello and welcome to Fight This Chess Hub. And we have a new viewer, I believe, Lewis. I don't know where you are from, Lewis, but you are welcome. And uh, we are now going to begin our session. By the way, uh, to, in today's session, we are going to go through four study games. I'm sure you read that in the notifications. The seniors have requested that, sir, we should be given about four minutes of thinking time instead of the three minutes of the regular time that I concede. So, okay, seniors, this is exclusively for you. If you think that, okay, that will solve your problems, then okay. I will grant you four minutes instead of three, but then you will have to promise that you will come up with something special and that you are thinking with, um, you know, uh, commensurate the added time that I'm giving you. So four minutes for the juniors, try to come up with at least the first move. Okay, at least there was another notification, an important one, which is that we must actually focus on the lecture because some members get deviated in the chat. Um, talking something that is unnecessary. So always remember that we should avoid such distractions. And welcome to all the people who are joining in. Thank you so much that you like the music. Get ready for the first game. Hello, Vihang. Welcome. Uh, hopefully you are here for the full one hour today. And uh, now I'm going to take you to the first board. We are going to study um, four games today. And the first game is from the Black's perspective. While the remaining three are from the White's perspective. Also, one more thing, guys. I'm going to share with you our memories of the hub. So there will be some photos that I will share with you. I have no doubt that you would love them. Reminiscence. So uh, we will study... Mm, we will study two games and then check out a video first and then another two games and then the uh, more photos would come. But first I think I'll share a video with you after the end of two games. Let's get started. Hopefully you are ready now and let's get started. Okay, so the first game we are looking at it from the Blacks perspective. It was uh, E4 and E5. Knight to f3, so clearly, well, you must understand what white wants to do, attacking the pawn on e5. Black responded with knight to c6. Now, a lot of players will like this. A lot of people over here will be happy that I am not tackling the alakine. It's something that you normally play as a beginner, e4, e5. So, I'm sure that you actually are loving this much more than the normal e4, knight f6. So, I thought that's the reason I've selected this game for you, okay? So e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6. So you can see that this pawn is uh, attacked once and this pawn actually is even defended once. Okay, that looks good for now. Bishop c4. So can you tell me what opening this is? Is this the Italian opening? 100% if you're thinking that it's Italian opening, it is. Had this bishop come to b5, then it would have been the Spanish or the Ruy Lopez as they say. But uh, with the bishop coming to c4, it's called the Italian game. Very aggressive. Very nice. Good for white so far. No problem. Situation is still in the balance though. Knight to f6. White castle. The imme immediate opportunity. Now, uh, black took the pawn on e4. And that's not a blunder by white. It's okay to give that pawn. You can get it back. Rook e1. Here, in fact, the better move was, uh, I suppose, to play the queen to e2 or even knight c3 works well here. It's not a blunder giving that pawn, by the way. And seniors keep a regular track of what I'm doing because I'm going to concede four minutes for all the variations that the seniors can calculate. It is a lecture for the A batch. So see to it that uh, the A batch guys are pretty active here. Okay. And what's next in this game? Black defended it with d5. It's a multi-purpose move. So the pawn not only brings support for the knight, but also attacks the bishop on c4. So black has played a multi-purpose kind of a move. Bishop was dropped back. Bishop to c5. So it looks like black is also getting ready to castle. Oh, that's a great thing. Black also wants to castle. And did he castle? But before that, white just played d4. Now, the idea is to get more activity. So white clearly has the rook lined up with the king. The queen also has an open file. Let's see if he's going to utilize it nicely. 
White got one of his pawns back. Remember, the knight was defending this pawn on e5. So when the knight took the pawn on d4, well, White sought the opportunity and he took on e5. So black did not castle but instead played queen f6. So now the threat is pretty clear here. The queen and the knight attacking on this weak f2 pawn. The juniors, if you are watching, always pay attention to opponent's last move. The opponent just played queen f6 here. And the idea of queen f6 is to attack this weak f2 pawn. Now what happens here is interesting. White played bishop takes d5. Now needless to say that white thinks that he is pretty much secure here. There is no back rank checkmate. So yes, queen takes f2 check and king h1 was played. And now I think you should uh, get 4 minutes from this particular point to calculate as much as you can including the variations. Listen to me very carefully, the seniors. Vihang watching this, Samartha watching this. I'm not sure what level Lewis plays chess. So I'm assuming that he is also quite experienced. So please calculate as much as you can. Okay, your four minutes are starting now. And uh, let me start your countdown timer. It is black to play, by the way. Four minutes of time and it is black to play your time starts focus only at the job at hand here it is black to play try to calculate as much as you can do not type anything unnecessary in the chat that will distract us focus on the work i have given you which is to calculate the best continuation for black
All right, your time is almost up. So what did you come up with? Well, most people thought that we can win the rook by just taking on the c2 with the knight. Uh, that's a fork, yes, but then is there anything better? And some seniors have calculated in depth and Jai has said that it looks like it is a mating net. Saumitra as well agrees, Chinmay as well agrees with it. So let's go ahead and uh, I will now execute it over the board. So let me take you to the board. There we are. Now what happened in this game was as follows. So screen G1 check. So most of you were right about this. So it's king takes uh, G1. And now knight to e2 is not just a check, but it's a double check. Now this is very important for you to remember. The knight's giving a check of its own, but because the knight moves, now there is a check with the bishop as well. Now in many of our previous lectures, we've seen this, that when it's a double check, very important that you remember that in a double check, both the pieces could be hanging, but then the king has to move because it's checked by two pieces. And you cannot take both the pieces on this immediate move. So forcibly, the king has to move here. And if the king has to move, well, then I believe um, what happened is king, yeah, okay, not king to h1, but king to f1. By the way, let me show you quickly what happens. If it's king to h1, that's a bad, disastrous choice because knight f2 is made. Now watch this mate. Such a disaster, big disaster. Mate with a couple of knights is just always something that you, uh, you know, you won't like. I still remember that Saumitra, Saumitra versus Samartha game. So if King H1, well, that happens. And uh, if not for this double check, that's why he would not go to H1. I just showed you the mate. That's why King F1 was played. And now it is Knight Four g3 check i repeat knight 4 g3 check why should it be knight 4 g3 check it could be knight 2 also knight 2 g3 check is also good i mean both the knights could have come but i suppose this is just cuter knight 4 g3 check now the king has only king doesn't have a square i believe yeah cannot take the knight because the knights are supporting each other doesn't have g1 because of the knight doesn't have f2 because of the bishop has his own rook alongside and the pawn stopping him. So the only move here is to take the knight. And after that, the other knight will simply just take g3 and believe it or not, it is checkmate. Well, such mates are very difficult to see. The king looks so much in the open. It doesn't look even like a mate. Be honest and let me know. Does it even look like a mate? At first glance, looks like the king is so much in the freedom. There could be so many squares for the king, but really, there are two friendly pieces for us. And the other squares are just taken by either the bishop or the knight. So, looks like the king is safe, but it's not. Fantastic calculation by almost all of you, which is fantastic. Okay. And uh, now what we are going to do is take a look at this game one more time. So, pay attention how it all began. All those who play e4, e5 should enjoy this one more time. e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, the Italian, and then knight f6. White castled, black took the pawn. Rook e1, attacking the knight here. So black played d5, supporting the knight as well as attacking the bishop. So bishop b3 was played, and then bishop c5, black is ready for castling. After this, white got the pawn back, and now instead of castling, queen f6. The idea of queen f6 move was to attack on this f2 pawn. White played bishop takes d5 and after queen takes f2, white never thought that he was in any trouble. But after this queen sacrifice, there is simply a beautiful checkmate that follows. So I'm sure that you love this. Uh, the calculation of the seniors was precise. I was very happy. Wonderful. By the way, all of you know that uh, uh, Saumitra did do a good job for us. Saumitra, very well done. You're doing a good job in the tournament. Fantastic. And well, I think it's Avdut, right? Avdut is saying that I did not see the checkmate. Okay, fine then. Remember, yeah, he shared the line. Every double check is a discovered check, but every discovered check is not a double check. Fantastic. Welcome, Suyash. Very good. Suyash Yevle has reached 1700. So, applause for uh, Suyash if you can applause him. Our uh, latest 
member from Pune. Suyash, did you catch the game? Did you miss the game? Welcome. And congratulations for entering 1700. Well done, Suyash. Very good. And now we will definitely go ahead and do the second game. Um, yeah, the second game is from the white side. I told you only the first game is from the black's perspective. So let me just get ready with my board because now I need it from the white's perspective. I am ready with the board. Let's start with our game number two. Jay, thank you from. Thank you for applauding, Suyash. Anglo Indian boy doesn't know where Pune is. I I suspect Anglo Indian boy is some Indian guy who pretends to be a foreigner. I don't know what the reality is, but somehow Anglo Indian boy confuses me about whether he is indeed from. Uh, some foreign country or some Indian trying to disguise as a foreigner. All right, guys. Game number two. We are looking at it from the white side. Now this is game two. Now here what's happening is it's e4, e5, bishop, c4. So this is nothing but the bishop's opening e4 e5 bishop c4 that's bishop's opening and knight f6 is the best reply so black here is playing really well knight f6 is indeed the best response you see you eliminate all this stupid uh, scholars made ideas also you start attacking this pawn which is hanging which is on e4 so i think that for bishop's opening black's best response is knight f6 Knight to c3, white played bishop c, black played bishop c5, so I think black is getting ready for castling here. Castle as soon as possible is one of the main principles in chess. Let's see what white did. d3. Now, remember this move, d3 looks good when bishop is outside, not inside on the, on the back rank. Then the move like d3 makes sense. The bishop is outside. So bishop is fully in action and then you close the diagonal with d3. I'm okay with that. Black also did the same. Notice that he also has his bishop outside and then he chooses to close it. Which is nice. Kind of symmetric here. Kind of. For the pawns that is. Now f4, knight c6, pawn push. Black castles, knight to f3, so white is also getting ready to castle, but he cannot castle immediately because the bishop's controlling g1 square. So white played knight f3, but uh, th there cannot be any castling for the moment because the king will not, you know, be on a safe square. All right, so knight to g4 was played, so you can notice that there is this threat here by black has got the support of the bishop so knight f2 this is something that the beginners fall trap to and now what did white do here something interesting anyway he could not castle so he played rook to f1 bringing the rook on the uh, f file and also lending protection to that f2 square much required now knight takes h2 was played now here is the thing why do you think he sacrificed here? You have to tell me. Why White did not take the knight? I'll wait for you in the chat. Why do you think? Well, okay. Anglo-Indian boy has clarified that he knows English very well. Well, then use English. Because every time you chat, friend, we have to actually use Google Translate to understand that. Okay. Queen h4 is right. Absolutely brilliant. Queen to h4 is absolutely right. Brilliant. So, the reason why white did not take the knight is because if white takes here on h2 what happens is this is queen h4 check which is not just a check but it's a four 
and there is no real defense but so the king has to move and after that you also have knight d2 check coming then there's king d2 queen h6 check king e1 again and then queen takes h2 so the king finds itself on the same square where everything began uh, by the way let me show that to you on the board one more time so i was saying that if white took that knight then what happens is this queen to h4 check now this is not just a check but it's a four very important you notice such things it's a four not just a check now there is no real defense there's no way to block the check so king e2 maybe then there is knight d4 check king to d2 queen h6 check maintaining the fork by the way it's a check and still maintains so king is dispatched back to the original square and finally queen can take on h2 so this is disastrous this is really really disastrous and that is why very important guys this is the reason why white did not take that sacrifice on the h2 square so black played knight takes h2 uh, let me come on camera this is something important avnish more uh, if you are listening to the lecture this is for you uh, avnish more and all those who are um, you know very busy with the national anthem of india at the start of the lecture i told you to focus on the game that i have and i understand that you are from the b batch you are not from the a batch but still if you want to chat about janaganamana you can just go offline and do it with each other don't waste our chat space for that so avnish more my dear spidey don't worry about the national anthem for the moment focus as a good student at the lecture at hand i will much appreciate that rather than any other chat and this is for all i have i had said this in the notifications so if there is anything else that you have to discuss then you can just leave okay thanks and now we will go back to our game we were discussing this i almost forgot what we were doing now uh, important we will we saw why the knight cannot take on h2 it's very important okay and uh, knight g5 was played by white remember that this knight is not hanging as the protection of this bishop so if you are thinking hey isn't that isn't the knight hanging well it's not that's the thing and that knight does a very important thing here it stops the queen's control of the h4 square i think that's a very important thing more importantly white will have his own checkmate ideas well knight took the rook very promptly and it is here that i want you to go ahead and calculate white's next move is definitely queen to h5 threatening obviously the checkmate the simple checkmate threat is queen takes h7 checkmate with the help of the knight support there so white played h6 and now it is here that i am going to start your 4 minutes this time it is white to play and i want everybody to pay attention and do some calculation i don't want you to be busy with anything else it's not required i'm telling you it's not required any other outside talk is really not required focus all your energy and your talent on thinking about white's continuation after this black has just stopped queen takes h7 checkmate what is the best continuation for white here your time has started and please stay focused on the position here
Okay, your time is up and uh, Saumitra was quite honest in saying cannot figure out what after King H8. Well, all of you have done your best. I'm so happy that you've done that. Uh, wonderful. Prajna was the first to come up with a line, something that is meaningful. Very good. She could not see a lot more. Uh, but yes, that's a good start. Prajna, I'm happy. Now, this is a meaningful contribution. This is what I want you to do, Prajna. And um, almost all of you were unanimous that an F7 square is the target. The main question is, should the bishop take on F7 first or should the knight take uh, F7? Should the knight take on F7? Well, I believe that uh, Jai has the right answer. So I'm going to show you all the lines. And if you are confused with your own calculation, now it is uh, time for you to listen to this properly. Okay, I'm going to show you all the variations. Listen to it properly. So now what I will do is show you one by one all the variations that exist. Let us first look at what happens after knight takes f7. Knight takes f7. If rook takes, then it is simply queen takes f7. And let's say if king h8, there is mate in five more moves. Can you see how it is made in five more moves? The simple idea is to play that. That's where Saumitra, I believe, was confused. Saumitra, so I hope you would love this variation. Um, so now what happened is in now what would happen here is you play f6. Now the logic of f6 here is that you aim for the queen takes g7 checkmate. It's a very simple looking checkmate. And uh, the point of this is it's, it, it's not unavoidable. For example, well, queen can take on f7, right? But if queen takes, oh, sorry, f6. If queen takes on f6, then there is queen g8 checkmate with the help of this bishop here. Guys, everybody should totally enjoy this variation. And you can enjoy these variations if you are focused on the board rather than the chat window. I repeat that. If you are focused on the board, you will get all the variations. Stay focused on the board at hand. Chatting can be done later. All right. So this is the variation. F6 threatening queen takes g7. If queen takes, then queen g8 mate. However, now you will say, sir, even the pawn can take. Yes. If the pawn takes, then again, the same checkmate on uh, g7 can be threatened with the queen. How? How can you threaten this particular um, checkmate but well, you can do that by playing bishop takes h6 so again you're threatening the same checkmate it's very important the seniors don't look for any other line while i'm explaining just focus on the line that i am explaining because i'll cover up everything well after that if i don't cover anything then you can let me know at the moment stay focused on the line that i want you to learn that is very important don't get deviated much so bishop takes h6 is right the same checkmate threat now again the way to avoid it is uh, probably sacrifice your queen bring it on f8 that's probably the only move the uh, other idea well, I don't even know. A bishop f2 check is some sloppy move. Absolutely sloppy move. But uh, th this is going to be made in the next three moves. The best move here is to play queen f8. You can imagine if that is the best move. In fact, you don't have to take with the bishop. You can take. So it's queen f8 and queen takes f8 check. Then there is king h7 and queen g7 checkmate. So this is beautiful. Even after that queen f8, it doesn't work. Now, what happens after knight takes uh, f7 and rook takes f7? Yeah, I showed you that. Now, what happens if king h7? Oh, this is nice. If king h7, there is bishop g5. Guys, now this is the most interesting variation. Okay. This is very important. Very important variation. Why I'm saying that is important is if the king were to go on h8 we all saw that it is made in the next five moves but now in this variation the king has come on h7 the winning move and the seniors are going to love this attack the seniors are going to love this attack watch this move bishop to g5 it's this is what is called a bolt from the blue <laughs> absolute bolt from the blue from nowhere you have this bishop g5 and i want the seniors now to calculate what happens if h takes g5 
Seniors, be quick about this. What happens now if uh, H takes G5? Let me know guys, what happens now? The pawn just took the bishop. Pawn just took the bishop. What's next now? How are we going to survive this? Absolutely, Vihang, Saumitra, spot on. Queen h5 is checkmate. Avnish, nice contribution here. Now I'm happy. Now you are with us and not getting deviated. Guys, believe it or not, Queen h5, game over. This bishop will continue to control g8 and it is a super checkmate. By the way, talking of checkmates, very soon, Omkar sir will hand over that lecture to me or rather not personally hand over but he'll probably email it to me and I'll upload the video on our channel about checkmating patterns. There are 36 checkmate patterns to study. He will cover I think I believe 4 to 6 patterns in one video. That is what I think he'll do. Again back to bishop g5. Here the other idea you would say sir why not queen g5. So again seniors my question to you is what happens if um, what now? What if queen takes g5? So from this position, what is the best move for white? The best move for white in this position. What is uh, the best thing? White to play and yes, now Namish, you are very impressive. Very good Namish, that's nice. Queen g8 is checkmate, wonderful. Now you have meaningfully started contributing. Now is there any other variation? How can black save the queen? Well, there is only one variation here, which is to give up the queen. Because queen is necessary to cover this g8 checkmate. That's why the queen cannot leave the back rank. So if you are wondering what happens, simply queen can you know save herself and go to d7. Well, then there is queen g8 checkmate again. So the best move in this situation, the computer suggestion is queen f8. And of course, queen takes f8 is just a free queen. It's game over for black. Such an important move to find out in this situation after queen takes such an important situation in such a critical situation, you must find a move bishop g5. Out of nowhere, this bishop g5 move is just totally out of the blue, out of the box and bold from the blue. By the way, here white, uh, if starts with bishop takes f7, it's still winning because now let's say if king uh, h8 instead of the rook takes, you have queen to g6 threatening this checkmate. And now the best move here is for black to just give up the queen. Of course, bishop takes. And uh, if if h takes again with haste, this queen h5 checkmate. And again, it is a beautiful pattern to be studied. And uh, if not that, if rook takes, well, in that case, queen takes f7. h7 this time is not possible. So king h8. And then the same idea with f6 threatening mate. So you have queen g8 this time. But you have queen g6. The idea is to push the pawn. And if queen takes this mate. So all in all it's just a jam packed situation for black. And I, I, I've always said this guys. That the counting is not important of material. The actual active position is so important. Look at black's pieces here. Black's pieces are all over. The back rank, you have the bishop as it is, you have the rook as unutilized. But white has an overwhelming winning attack on the king side. Let's look at the game one more time. Very important guys. Let's look at the, the entire game from the start, from the white side. So e4 and e5. Bishop c4, that's a bishop's opening or the bishop's attack. Knight f6, knight c3. By the way, knight f6 was attacking this pawn. I'm sure you're watching that. So after knight to c3, the pawn gets defended. Bishop c5, black gets ready for castling. d3, d6, f4. And uh, knight to c6, pawn advance. So he just shut this bishop. 
Castling by black, knight f3, now preparing for the fork, white defended with the rook, knight took on h2, I've already showed you the variation that if knight takes h2, there is queen h4 check, it's not good, so knight g5 was played, knight took the rook, queen h5, threatening checkmate, and after h6, you saw this beautiful variation, with knight takes f7, rook takes, queen takes f7, and if king h8, then there is a beautiful checkmating idea. All over that is. If pawn takes, bishop takes, and over. In fact, this is over. And after king to h7, then you have the bishop g5 winning move. If h takes g5, then this is made. If the queen takes g5, then there's queen g8 mate. If queen d7, there's queen g8 mate. And if queen f8, then this, the queen is free. Absolutely remarkable. This bishop g5. This is one game that after the lecture, I want all of you to revisit. And probably study this, play this with your board in front of you. It will be of great help, guys. Absolutely. And now, what we'll, what we are going to do... is we are going to now we are going to actually share the memories now the first memory i want to share is uh, about it's not a photo it's a video i would like to say uh, suyash if you are with us and the outsiders if you are there with us well what happened was and to the new members as well there was once this uh, a uh, power failure, a major power failure in the city and we were in the hub and we were wondering how to make uh, it count. So we had the um, UPS, the power supply, backup, inverter, we had that. But then it was not sufficient enough to run the projector. We were having a projector session at that time, those who remember what I'm saying. So we decided to play a bullet series and everybody was playing 1 plus 0 games. It was that time when we were playing... Uh, you know, one plus zero and all the seniors were also there. So it was a huge group focusing on one board. And the game I want to show you today uh, is between Vihang and Gopesh. This was a very nice game. And in fact, we took an opinion poll before the game and everybody double voted. I took the uh, opinion uh, where um, I asked people about who they thought was going to win and everybody raised their hand and said that okay um, um, Vihang will win, Vihang will win and later when I asked who was supporting Gopesh again everybody raised their hand so it was a, a double uh, voting now here uh, Namish is telling us something that is completely not necessary Namish is saying that Germany has opened its lockdown. Maybe that is the answer for my next tactical position, right? Namish, you think that? Yeah, sure. That's the answer, right, Namish? For the next position, white to play, you are going to suggest the good move is Germany lifted the lockdown. I think that is a fantastic answer. The, give me one reason why I should not block you from the chat. Namish Dhake, Germany has lifted the lockdown. Is that the answer to my next chess position? That's your answer for my next position for chess. And then you cheat and then you grumble. Shouldn't you be focused on what we want to do, Namish Dake? Huh? Please focus on the job at hand. That, that would be better. So let's start with the video. And people are saying that they remember it. Fantastic. Let me know if the video, the audio for the video was right. Okay, let me take you to the concerned thing now. Enjoy it, guys. Enjoy it.
Absolutely brilliant. Uh, so, Vihang, what happened there? I think uh, the point was Vihang was, it, it was an equal position, but Vihang did not take the bishop. Did you notice where Vihang could have taken the bishop? I'm going to play this video one more time, and now this time it is for seniors. This time it is not for fun. This time I want the seniors to give me their views about what was the time when Vihang could have taken Gopesh's bishop. Let me know if you think that Vihang could have won this game by taking the bishop. Watch it one more time. Listen to this. Watch it one more time and let me know if Vihang could have actually won the game. Did he, should he have taken the bishop? So very important. Let us see what one more time, but this one, this one, is uh, for the seniors. Seniors, please pay attention to the moves. Let me know what opening it was. I will ask you some questions at the end of this video. Let us go back to what we want to see. Okay, so guys, did you notice that Vihang actually could have taken the bishop on what square? C3, right? I think Vihang got uh, distracted because yes, it is the French defense, Jay, you're right. So I think you could have taken that bishop on C3. The mate was threatened on G7. So seniors, let me know if you spotted that correctly. Your uh, opinion. Vihang could have taken the rook. Where Vyang could have taken the rook, my dear. After queen f3, yes. Um, yeah. There was a bishop on c3. I think you could have taken that bishop on c3. But you thought that queen takes g7 was the checkmate. But the same bishop was supporting the g7. Absolutely. Now, Namish, you are right. c3 is a good contribution than Germany lifting the lockdown. Which is fine. Yes, Sanchit. You are absolutely right. Okay. And now, after this, let us go back to the games. We are going to do more games. And later, I am going to share um, some more memories with you. Let us go ahead and study uh, more games here. Uh, let me set up the board. This is again from the white side. I am ready. So this is our game number three for today. Okay, The game number three from the white perspective e4 d5 uh, quickly type the name in the chat i'm going to wait for you guys to type the name in the chat what is this defense let me know guys in the chat i will wait for you to type and let me know what defense is this Ha! Ah, Avduta shared a nice memory. He says that it, the price was 11 rupees. Was it? Really? I'm not sure of that. Wonderful. Avdut remembers that. 
And so Mitra is right. It is the Scandinavian defense. Brilliant. It's not Queen's pawn, Arya. It's the Ooh, Rayansh has even given the eco. The eco is B01. Fantastic. Scandinavian defense is absolutely right. So uh, very good. Let's continue. And Avdut, thanks for sharing that it was 11 rupees. I was, I was not sure that the winner got 11 rupees. Really? Was that the gift? Hello, Pooja, ma'am. I never saw you in the chat before this. Anyway, Scandinavian is right. Let's continue. White took on d5. Queen takes d5. Knight c3. Simple and straightforward tempo move. Many white players like this. However, the new, the modern line is to play the knight to f3. I personally play knight to f3 a lot rather than this knight on c3. The simple reason nowadays why they do that is that you get this pawn blocked behind the knight on c2. Whereas you can push the pawn to c4 and then put the knight behind it on c3. That's the modern way of looking at things. And Avdut says that yes, it was 11 rupees and uh, Gopesh, what? Joke, 11 rupees. Maybe I asked him to buy a snack or something for 11 rupees. Maybe you get a vada pav. I don't know. The then budget of 11 rupees. And yes, Jay, you're right. No, Jay, but uh, if you look at the video closely, at this stage when you had this game played, you had the, uh, the, the tables. Prior to that, we had the benches where we made the arrangement in a way that we could place the chess boards. Anyway, back to the game. Thank you, guys. Now, what's happening here is the queen goes to a5. It's a typical main line. d4, c6. Now, c6 is not just a move that is intended to control d5. But in fact, that's a very good escape square for the queen. What happens normally is that in the Scandinavian, the bishop kind of attacks, comes on d2 and attacks the queen. So what happens is that the, the queen then goes back to c7. That's a very good square for the c7 to retreat. So it's a mainline Scandinavian where you have the c6 pawn play. Okay. And uh, let's see now. After c6, you have knight f3, bishop pinning the knight. It's a relative pin, mind you. The bishop uh, has pinned the knight. It's a relative pin. Queen, uh, sorry, bishop f4, e6, h3. Question to the bishop. What's the bishop going to do? So bishop takes f3 and queen takes f3. Now bishop b4. Now mind you, always watch opponent's last move. It's attacked twice. But it is also defended twice. So I see no problem there. The queen and the pawn defended twice as well on that c3 square. Okay, so white played bishop e2 getting ready for castling. Knight d7. So maybe black wants to castle long. I'm not so sure. Let's find out. White now played a3. In Scandinavian, it's a very common thing that, uh, you know, black wants white to play a3, attack the bishop. But what happens is that you cannot take the bishop because the rook on a1 is hanging. Let me say it again. It's a very common idea in the Scandinavian where white plays a3 and black doesn't mind that. Because the rook on a1 at times is hanging. So you cannot really take that bishop. As you can see here in the diagram as well. It's absolutely the same thing. And now if Prajna and Jai, if you can bring this back to the topic please. Jay and Prajna, uh, from your sweet memories, you can come to our lecture. You're missing it so much. If you want to remember, if you want to be remembered by us, you be better, you know, play better chess. So please focus here. The French defense was in the video. This one is the Scandinavian defense. The French defense was in the video where it's E4 by white and E6 by black. So I hope Purvesh gets his answer. When you when white's opening move is e4 and when black plays e6, that's the French defense that happened in that Vihang versus Gopesh video. Okay, back to this one now. You will not believe what happened here. What did white black? Of course, long castle. I told you that black is quite comfortable. The pawn cannot take the bishop. Guess what? White actually took that bishop. Actually, and now queen will take the rook, right? 
Now what will happen here? This is incredible. Now what will happen here? Queen takes a1 check and white played king d2. This is extraordinary. And black took the rook on h1 as well. And now I will give you three minutes for this instead of the four. I will this time give you three minutes. And this time I would want participation also of the uh, juniors. Find out what is white's best move now. Rajna, focus on chess here. Okay, so the time is up and uh, people have made a lot of meaningful contribution in the chat and they think that it's the same game. It's not the same game. Saumitra was absolutely right. It was with knight takes e6 and then the, the only thing similar is that you had the black queen on the white's first rank. That was something similar. But this game is definitely different. It In that sense, it is similar, but the game is different. And uh, so right, someone I think said it was Borden's mate. So that is perfect calculation. Brilliant indeed. If Omkar sir were here right now, he would be so happy with that. It is known as the Borden mate. Absolutely brilliant. It is indeed the Borden mate. Now, the thing is, um, in the game, let me take you to the board. In the game, indeed, the execution is with the queen sacrifice. So queen takes c6. This is just shockingly brilliant. Black resigned in the game here, actually. The game did not continue after this because Black resigned. He knew that this made the next move. If B takes C6, then Bishop A6 is checkmate. I always love this crisscross pattern. Something to watch out for. And this is just pretty for white, ugly for black. And uh, this is indeed the Bowden mate. This is absolutely, Vihang was the first one to say that, fantastic, fantastic.
Vihang was the first one to say that. Okay, guys, so let us take a look at this game one more time. So you can use this as your weapon against the um, Scandinavian. Should you encounter Scandinavian, you can do that. How will you set it up? You will set it up this way where you have this queen and bishop, ba uh, queen and bishop battery attacking against c3. Then you can play a3, a3, okay? And then, well, when, just when you think that, you know, you cannot take, Black will think that you cannot take on b4, you just do that. Then when black thinks that, hey, yum, 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 taking your first rook, then you play the king, you give the other rook as well, and now time to deliver this coup de gras, which is queen takes c6 check. Notice that the king cannot go to b8 because of this bishop. So th there really is no other way. Black has to take this, and now this beautiful mate that I keep talking about, where this is known as the Bowden's made the crisscross pattern is what I call it. Absolutely brilliant indeed. So we are done with three games. We will deal with the fourth game as well and then go back to our memories. Okay. Game number four. I think Saumitra replied it before. And Saumitra, I appreciate you because you said that knight takes c6 thing that was brilliant memory. Because in that game, that happened. Okay. So, let's go to our next game. This is the last game that we are going to study. Let me get my board ready. We're looking at the white side for the last game as well. So, seniors, get ready. This is the fourth game. And uh, maybe for this one, there is something special in store. I'll stop at the right time to give you the thinking time. Game number four begins with e4 and e5. Knight f3, knight c6 and d4. So what is the name of this opening? I'll wait for you to type in the chat. What is the name of this opening? Now, Daksh Sani, I will uh, take challenges on Tuesday. Normally, Tuesday is the day when I take challenges. We have um, Daksh Sani, who probably is a new viewer welcome uh, i will accept challenges but i do that on tuesday at the moment though what we are going to do is study this game and later do some tactics this lecture can go beyond seven so those uh, well i think i believe jay wanted to leave early so jay you can you said that you wanted to go early you had some lecture coding lecture you can go ahead and do that so daksh i hope uh, i've helped you here Yes, this is the this is the Scotch game, absolutely right. And this is called breaking the center. The name of the opening is a Scotch game, but yes, by move d4, it's breaking the center. This is not the Sicilian defense, Namish. E4 c5 becomes a Sicilian defense. This was e4 e5. This is not the Sicilian. This is the Scotch. So let's go back to the board. Now this uh, is the exchange. So let's go back d4. E takes d4, knight takes d4, black played knight to f6. Typical idea is to attack this e4 pawn. Black took the knight and uh, of course black, black queen is threatened here. So white took the black knight, black queen is under threat. Of course you don't want to take here with the d pawn simply because otherwise black will lose his castling rights. So b takes. Bishop d3, never forget that your pawn was hanging. So bishop d3, the rook was played to b8. Bishop g5, relative pin, d5. The pawn was pushed. Queen to e7. So those who are thinking, hey, this knight is free. Well, hold on. This pawn is pinned. Very important. So white castles. And now there is a renewed threat. Should do something about it. Queen takes pawn. Rookie one. Queen. The queen is pinned to the king here. Obvious move. Knight to e4. Bishop takes e4. Obviously here you cannot play the move d takes e4. Because if you play d takes e4, then queen d8 is checkmate. This is brilliant guys. Just observe this. Very, very important. And uh, 
so very important guys there is a checkmate here prajna if you would focus on the checkmate here that i'm showing on the board which is fantastic by the way so that's why you cannot take this bishop if you take this bishop then there is queen d8 checkmate there is support with the bishop and by the way this is the opera checkmate you remember that lecture when omkar sir was with us there was this similar checkmating pattern this is the opera checkmate so that will happen so you cannot take that so queen takes g5 happened the bishop was hanging and uh, now what happened is bishop takes d5 is a discovered check so black cannot take the bishop there was there is this discovered check and uh, now bishop e7 was played and now it is here that i am going to give you your 4 minutes of thinking time and i want everybody to participate leave aside everything else participate only in this position i don't want you to tell me any other thing in the chat but just focus here
All right. So your time is up, and most of you were right. Most of you, absolutely brilliant. I'm very happy, except for Rayansh. I believe Rayansh thought Bishop takes F7 was the best, but no, I don't think so. Bishop takes C6 check is the most important uh, move here. Let me show it to you over the board. So what happens is Bishop takes C6 is check. And uh, let's say what happens if king f8, then there is mate in two moves here. Namish was right, but Namish, you said queen d8 checkmate. It's not d8 checkmate because after queen d8 check, the bishop can take. And now this is again rook e8 checkmate. Again, sort of an opera checkmate, sort of. Now you can find out if there is another name for this one. Okay. Uh, the other position um, that can arise from here is what if after bishop takes c6 check, what happens if bishop blocks it? That can happen, right? Bishop can block it. Well, in that case, you have queen takes d7 check with king to f8. And uh, well, now you cannot go ahead and make the queen d8 because uh, now you have rook takes d8. So over here, queen takes c7 loses on the spot for black because now the rook has nowhere to go rook absolutely has nowhere to go has no square is there any way for black to defend this rook there is absolutely no way and anywhere he goes will just be a peace loss for example if rook e8 but well, there is bishop e8 and if king takes e8 well then queen c8 is checkmate notice that this bishop cannot block it because of the pin so this is going to be disastrous. Although bishop d7 line is not a forced checkmate. I was looking for that variation. If the king goes to f8, then it is checkmate. But if bishop d7 blocks it, if black blocks it, blocks the check, if black plays bishop d7, then this is the resulting line. Of course, white is totally winning here because after that, you have queen takes d7, a piece down. And later queen takes c7, the rook is also lost. The rook has really nowhere to go. There is nothing, no scope. And that's why the rook is completely lost here. And so is the position. So let's go back to the game. Take a look at the game right from the start. Do nothing. Later we will enjoy some more memories before moving on to the tactics. So the game began with e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, d4. This is the scotch game. This is not the Sicilian, Namish. This is the scotch game. e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, d4. e takes d4, knight takes d4, knight f6 to attack the pawn. Knight takes c6, attacking the queen. So b takes c6, not, e, not d takes, okay? Now bishop d3 defending the pawn that was hanging. Rook was played to b8. Bishop g5 pinning the knight, d5 and the pawn push. So the knight is pinned. White thinks he can win the knight easily. Then there is queen to e7, castle, queen takes. The queen is pinned here. Looks like it's game over, but no, now the knight is not pinned. So knight blocks it. Bishop takes. And now the pawn take is not possible here. I showed you why because of the queen d8 checkmate. So uh, queen takes, of course, is useless because the rook will just take. So black played queen takes g5. And now bishop takes d5 is a discovered check. The rook gives a check. Bishop block the check. What happens here if king d8? That's one variation that we'll find out. Bishop takes c6 looks tremendous here. Because now there is uh, this checkmate threat everywhere. There is this checkmate threat. The queen is already giving the check. The bishop uh, d7 will just immediately be checkmate with queen takes d7. So here the only move is bishop d6, I believe. The only move worth trying. But then this will really be bad as after there are two good moves for white here. Knight c3 and queen e2. Both are winning on the spot. Put that in the engine. The engine will give you plus 2.5 at least. That did not happen in the game though. So, king d8, no, not king d8, bishop e7, bishop takes c6, and now king f8, then there is mate in two moves. So, there is bishop d7, and after this, queen takes d7, and black is completely losing. But it's not a forced checkmate in this sequence. 
I strongly recommend that you go ahead and actually uh, revisit this video if you want to write down these famous games. Next time onwards what we will do is that um, we will go ahead and study even the names of the players. I used to do that previously. So I should rather tell you the names of these famous players as well because these are the famous games I bring for you every Thursday. So I will from the next Thursday try to bring the names as well for you. And now it is the time of memories again. So what memory am I going to share with you? If you remember that we always had the tournaments every two months in the hub. You remember that, right? But the tournament that I am talking about, well, Rupak, nice that you are here. Wonderful. Um, my point is, there was this um, tournament that we had organized in a hall. We took a playing hall. It's a big, it was a big auditorium come hall for the function. And uh, we organized a tournament, I believe it was Sunday, Sunday morning. Everybody was there and it was a Swiss League tournament, if you remember. So I'm going to share some memories of this tournament. Please let me know in the chat if you remember uh, what I am actually uh, saying. If you remember this particular, uh, what can I say? If you remember the tournament, I, I'm not sure all of you were there. I don't think all of you were there. Nah, I don't think so. So let me go ahead and share that with you. There you go. Now I'll wait for every image and I will wait also for your comments. Very, very important, guys. Your comments. So, you remember this tournament? How many people remember this? Wonderful.
Okay, that's it for now. Uh, well, what memories. Beautiful, beautiful indeed. Now, uh, people are suggesting that we should have more tournaments like this. Um, we will have uh, a tournament like this once the hub reopens and we all meet. This is fantastic. This is brilliant. We will share some more videos again sometime. Guys, it is almost uh, 7.40 here and I think it's been a long, long time now. So we will let aside the tactics part. We will stop at this lovely moment and uh, we will now meet again uh, tomorrow. By the way, Saumitra, make sure that you send the message tomorrow morning again. For tomorrow's tournament, very, very important. For tomorrow's tournament, I will definitely make sure that I will, you know, watch this, the time utilization part. I don't want you to play hasty games. All the best to everybody. Don't let it be simple for anyone. Tough fight is expected. I will note your games. will be feedback on Sunday. If Omkar sir sends me the email today or maybe tomorrow morning i'll upload the lecture i'm hopeful that he will do it soon he's busy with something but he said he will share it soon so we will definitely stop for the moment and uh, yeah uh, guys we won't do the tactic it's 7 40 it's already too late so we will stop we will meet tomorrow i will start the live coverage five minutes in advance no omkar sir is not playing tomorrow no, he will play next Friday, not tomorrow. He will play the tournament next Friday. So tomorrow it's all you. Um, and Namish, make sure that you play more games with your new ID because up until you have that question mark next to your ID, you will not be allowed to enter the tournament. So you have to play uh, extra games. Once you go, I think beyond 10 or 15 games and that question mark will disappear, then you will be allowed to play in the tournament. So all the best, take care of yourself and uh, do not venture outside. We will meet tomorrow up until that time.